Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sagar Pujapati and in this video, I am going to explain an end-to-end -end project idea of Azure Data Factory. So if you are someone who is looking for a job or who is looking to switch their domain from uh, any, any domain to Azure Data Engineering, especially to Azure Data Engineering, then you can watch this video till the end. The reason why I am making this video because I have seen a lot of people who have uh, like who who face a lot of issues while building a project like they learn uh, they, they learn about the concepts uh, from the youtube from any courses but they fail to build a project and uh, you know uh, and then that's how they fail uh, to crack an interview right so that's why you know i thought to uh, uh, you know give you a idea lump sum idea like what type of project you should create you should add in your resumes so that you know you won't face difficulty during interviews as well as during your day-to-day -day job right so uh, see i have already built a project I, there's a course dedicated course for that if you like you can go and take that course if you do not i mean if you do not want to invest money or whatever then you can build by your own too so this is how i mean, I mean this is what the video is right so uh, this is the course like master in azure data factory interview question and end-to-end -end project so i included here both the things like interview question as well as the end-to-end -end project too so uh, i mean if you like if you want you can you know just check out this course other than that other than that you know there is uh, uh, i mean uh, yeah this is the course and this is the uh, page i will give you the link in the description box so here total 375 people have been have taken this course and you can see that uh, it has total it has total like 14 hours of content this is good enough right so i have covered actually everything like introduction then interview questions the end-to-end -end project so end-to-end -end project you can see that you know i have uh, covered till power bi as well as the cicd part also right so chalo, let's get started uh, you know to understand like how i mean what type of project you should build right so basically in adf we have three things one is for extraction one is for manipulation or means transformation and third one is for scheduling okay so this is three things uh, uh, you know adf is being used right now for extraction we have basically activities like copy activity uh, copy activity metadata activity metadata lookup lookup activity if else and for loop rest api not rest api this is web activity and sql database activities like there are couple of uh, activities not sql database i i i should say here is skipped activity and so right likewise likewise for manipulation we use basically data flows and for scheduling you know uh, we have that uh, triggering thing triggering or scheduling so we use that so basically adf is used for three type of things and in my five years of experience i have seen a lot of company use adf for two things for scheduling and for extraction the data extraction of data means uh, copying from ADLS, copying from REST API, copying from Gen2, copying from SharePoint, and so, and they schedule it, uh, you know, based on their frequency, like, right? like, or, I mean, uh, scheduling means automatically the data will copy from ADLS to uh, ADLS, REST API to ADLS, Gen2 to ADLS, and SharePoint to ADLS. This can be a SQL DB2 or we can say SQL table. But generally, generally we should not, you know, pull the data directly from ADLS to SQL DB. Uh, generally, we, we put it in a Gen2 layer for now. And another, and you know, once it is done, generally companies, what they do, they, they usually have a Databricks or SQL engine or processing engine or they have a Snowflake, right? they they use either this or either this to to process or to create a dimension and factible or on top of the branch data or the raw data right but 
if you if you want to be a proper engineer or proper data factory engineer then you should also know what is data flows so basically you know data flows is used for manipulation what i said what i told you right or transformation right so what happens generally you can assume it's a sql table which is source you copy it you copy it on a fly you copy it and put it in 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 one of the raw layer in a raw on top of raw layer what you will do you will clean it and then uh, you will clean it and you can put it into some clean layer then uh, you can put it into the gold layer using some aggregation you know on top of it you can do some aggregation and put it in a gold layer this is how we we have to do and this uh, data flow will work work here and here in these two layers because we want to manipulate the data right so we can do only using data flows we cannot do using uh, normal activities so in data flows what we can do we can join two tables we can you know uh, we can uh, do a select operation we can do a filter operation we can do a group by operation and so so things now what type of project you should be uh, you should be building so see again i am saying if you want you can take the course or else you can build by your own so i have seen a lot of people i have seen a lot of youtube videos where you know uh, what i mean I'm, I'm, I mean, there are a lot of videos where uh, uh, YouTubers, what they have done is that they, they pull the data from one source and uh, they create like multiple activities, copy activities, uh, repeated copy activities and they do the project and they complete the project. This is not how you should do it. Basically, uh, uh, what I would say, you have to prepare a uh, I mean, you have to, you know, uh, you have to find out some open source REST API. You can assume that you are pulling the uh, pulling one table from here. Then we have RDBMS. You can set up. You, you can use your uh, you can use Azure SQL DB only. And here you can you can put like two tables, table B and table C. And we have Gen two, right? Here also, what you can do, you can you know uh, create multiple containers or you can create multiple files. Let's say one file is in the form of JSON, one file in the form of Parquet right or not json make it csv and you can assume that we have to put uh, we have to uh, you know we can consider this d and e table and then you can assume one is from event hub okay and you, this is a table a b c d e f right, so basically we are going to pull one two three four five six tables right so these all the source this so this all the sources you should consider and to make a project complex you can assume a pagination pagination uh, pagination apis right which will have a multiple pages now now you have to put this data into a gen2 branch layer and once it is done then you have to put it into the uh, you know uh, once it is put into the branch layer now this rest api this is the rest api right so this rest api uh, will have the data into the json format so put json format uh, file or file you know then in rdbms this can be fetched in the form of parquet these two can be fetched as it is csv and parquet and in F, uh, maybe you can put it pi k or Avro, whatever, or JSON, right? Now, why I'm saying like I, I will not be touching the data in the branch layer because what if tomorrow, what if tomorrow, uh, I mean, see, uh, you you can say that, hey, Sagar, uh, why you are putting this data into the JSON format? Right, you can put in you can put into the parquet format. I can do that. 
but what what happens tomorrow what if if my data gets corrupted right my if my data gets corrupted at least i will have i ha i will have my branch layer uh, so that i can go back and you know uh, check the data uh, in the in i mean i can go and check the data like what was the data right that's why i'm not i'm not changing it now once we have a branch layer once we copy the everything over here we put uh, here into gen2 which is a kind of silver layer and here what you can do and here what you can do you can uh, use a data flows to manipulate it and then you can use uh, not manipulate or clean it like changing schema adding a new columns and blah blah things or changing the uh, attributes names too and then in the in the you know gold layer you can let's say uh, we have like table a b c d e f so we can you know make we, we can join these two tables we can join these two tables we can join these four tables and put it like and we can create like a master a dimension table a b c and some of the fact table this is fact table something like that we can fact table or you can say a fact file right and once it is done then we shown in uh, we, we can put the data into sql data warehouses and then on top of that we can build a power bi report import model or whatever right and in between we should have also have we should also have a logic app to send some emails automation emails as well as to refresh the power bi we should it is required to have a logic app right it is easy process this is how you know uh, the project should look like and you might be thinking saga this is not a complex project you are explaining it's a very simple project straightforward no dude it depends how you are building the project now uh, there are some points which you have to consider first one is use parameterization method means link service should be parameterized data warehouse sorry data uh, data sets should be parameterized and copy activity also can be parameterized logic app can be parameterized you should have a kind of meta data file or table to copy data from db to gen2 why i am saying this see we have this source right idbms right now we have two sources what if tomorrow we have like uh, 10 tables like we have right now we have two tables tomorrow we have 10 tables then what will happen we have to again build a pipeline and so so things you should not do it we will i mean what we will do uh, you know uh, we will make a metadata file and we will put their entry like hey this is table a table b table c and this table a should be mapped i mean should be named should be named like a1 a uh, b1 and c1 in the sync side so something like that we can generate and th this is all this is all this is how i covered in the project or in the interview questions right so that you do not need to do a deployment or you do not need to do a development work again same goes for gen 2 see we have csv file we have parquet file what if tomorrow someone uh, give every file and like this will be like g then how you will do that again you have to build a new pipeline we should not do it we should not do it you are, you are not like a noob, I mean, try to become a pro engineer, not a noob engineer. Okay, so this is how, you know, everything should be parameterized, should be metadata driven, so that if any, any, anything comes in future, there should be a minimal development work. And with that, you have to also you use CI, CD pipeline to deploy ADFs. Maybe you can use GitHub github actions or maybe you can use uh, azure devops okay this is how you should do it 
i hope that you understood it and see i'm again telling you like if you want to be a good engineer build project build a project build project build complex project see this project can be built very easily right and one more thing what i would like to tell that if you want to build more the uh, uh, complex project in rdbms try to do incremental load okay do not do a full load incremental load means see if we have uh, like if we have like table a which has id and name you can say one two sagar alex so when we copy today we should have like one two sagar and alex tomorrow let's say we have we have like three uh, kim added so we should only copy a new row or the updated row we should not copy the whole data this is how you this is how we should do it right so depends on you know how i mean i mean uh, based on uh, de 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 depends on you how you want to complex your project if you want to have a straightforward project then try this yours buddy okay chalo i hope that it's good and if you like you can again go check out the course i will give the link in the description description box as well as into the i button if you want any other course also you can explore it Okay, so thank you. Bye-bye. We'll meet you in the next lecture.